Hello everybody, this is Decentralized Dave with Curtis. Hello. Hi David. From yet another podcast time. We do this podcast weekly, but this is a special, special circumstances. Curtis is traveling, so we are forced to do a one in the midweek. So uh, we've got quite few updates for you today. So Curtis, you always start, please. Yeah, sure. So yeah, today is a good day to have an update. Um, the mm -hmm. price just took off in the last 24 hours or so, day and a half. Yeah. Um, we, uh, significant breakout because we had a, a chopping channel for uh, uh, about two weeks in the 19 to 22 range. And now we've had a, a breakout above the, the 22.5. I guess 23,000 was kind of a breakout. And now mm -hmm. it's jumped to 24.2 at the high. We've got quite a bit of um, upside potential up to about 28.29. Um, if you look at, there's not a lot of resistance um, mm -hmm. of this range. So you can see how it dropped very quickly in the red descending it, in about four days, it dropped very quickly. Um, so there's room for it to go up to about 28.29 uh, mm -hmm. perhaps. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, importantly, we're above the 200 week moving average, which okay. stands at about 22.5. So, this is it. Yeah. So we've mm -hmm. broken above that. Uh, we had tested it a couple times. I think this is the fourth time that we tested it as resistance and then it's broken through. So that's significant. Uh, it's significant. Um, the 200 week movie average has been a very strong line of support since the beginning of Bitcoin. It broke this time. And it stayed below that longer than people expected. But mm -hmm. um, if you believe in, in charts or sorry, in, in trend lines, um, it's an important one that we stay above it. So if we do retrace <clears throat> here, that we mm -hmm. drop uh, and maybe touch the 22.5 or 23 and then go back up. So we're looking for the 200 weekly moving average to become support instead of resistance. Um, so why is this happening? Um, well, uh, we can go over to stocks now. Uh, we can look at the yeah, sure. Let me we've had um, switch. So stocks. There we go. Yeah, stocks have had a, a good five, six, seven days. Um, Q2 earnings are coming out, um, and they've been better than expected. So okay, uh, so that's the reason. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, April, May, June is the second quarter on U.S. stocks reporting. Um, on Monday this week, you had the banks reported. Uh, good earnings. Um, yesterday we had Netflix come out and it beat earnings. And so the expectation is that these are indicative of the rest of the earnings that come out in the next uh, week or two. And it's yeah. showing that uh, consumers are resilient. So um, there was a lot of money saved up during the COVID restrictions. The mm -hmm. average household still has savings. Okay. Uh, unemployment remains low. So there's all these warnings of recessions, but you have Consumer spending keeping up, right? At least in the okay. second quarter. Mm -hmm. um, the housing market has not crashed yet, although it, the, its prices seem to have leveled. That okay. might be to come. But in the very, very short term, um, stocks are strong and, and we may get a bit of a bear market rally here uh, mm -hmm. because uh, consumers are still spending, earnings are strong, and unemployment rates are very low. So the recession, uh, it might be here, but it hasn't showed up in the numbers yet. I agree. Um, and that, that's why stocks are, are rallying. And that's why, well, one reason that crypto has, has rallied as well. Um, the other news specific to crypto is the contagion seems to have slowed down, right? There was the Three Arrows Capital crash. It knocked on and wiped out BlockFi, mm -hmm. uh, Voyager, Celsius. Um, uh, you know, uh -huh. we'll talk about this yeah. a bit later, but price drives sentiment. So as soon as the price goes up, People are thinking maybe the contagion is over. We we don't know that for sure, um, yeah. but um, uh, let's see on that. The other thing is um, sentiment got quite negative. Um, you know, we talk about tops and bottoms are when people are on one side or the other side of the boat too much. And we had a lot of YouTube, uh, you know, influencers saying we're going to go lower, we're going to go to 10k, we're going oh, to did 12K. we? Yeah, a lot. Okay, yeah. I haven't seen but, that many, but okay. Yeah, a lot. Um, some of the big ones, Crypto Sniper, um, Bitcoin, okay, right. um, yeah. quite a few um, were talking very calmly about 10K, right? And like you said, when okay. we were at 70K, no one would have said that. Um, yeah. You see, you saw, I saw at least five or six major influencers talking about 
uh, Bitcoin below 17K. And so um, okay. hmm. that tends to be a bottom indicator. But but we'll see. Um, uh, some of the more bearish uh, people I'm watching are thinking that this in stocks, is, this is just a bear market rally and it's going to turn over again and go back down. And there's a strong chance that that crypto and Bitcoin would follow that trend back down. But uh, in the meantime, we may hit um, you know, another 10% rally in stocks and maybe Bitcoin hits uh, 30K in the very short term. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I guess it's my turn. Um, it, I did not see the breakout over 23K coming. I will show you why. So, uh, so this is the funding rates. This is the last seven days. This is last 14 days. But yeah, there were a little bit indications of negative funding rates, but uh, it pretty much it did not seem like like it was going to break out. Not to me, at least. Uh, then also my favorite over leveraging indicator. I pulled out today for you the long shorts a global ratio, uh, which is negative. So like. At least this indicator shows that there is more shorts. This is accounts, so more short accounts. So it is true that maybe I have underestimated that there were more shortings or more people shorting than I thought. It is true that also I have underestimated that perhaps many more influencers were bearish than I thought because I am eyeing quite few and these aren't and I'm waiting for them to, to capitulate, to, to give up, to, to be bearish. It right. hasn't happened yet. So, um, but okay, yes, I, uh, also we've gotten the comment. Uh, I mentioned it on the last podcast that quite few influencers are bearish already. So I agree. I might have underestimated that. One thing I agree with Curtis about is that there was an excessive amount of FUD. Okay, now the most, imp now the most important message from me. So the ascending wedge I mentioned last time is going to be extending because it's obvious it's obviously that we are this is on daily the ascending wedge that i can see and usually the last push on the ascending wedges the last push upwards is like really convincing it's like it's like a, like the head fake if you see what i mean like that's what usually happens in the wedges we had like weekly ascending wedge in the spring this right. was a weekly 40K. ascending wedge Went to and also 40. The last one was like to 48. It was more convincing than yeah. the others. Yeah. Yeah, that was quite convincing, wasn't it? It looked like we were going back to all time highs. Yeah. So the last pushes, uh, they usually are convincing. I am going to still say, guys, that I don't know when. I will not try to hit the timing, but the wedge and also the over leveraging and also a couple of the influencers that I am eyeing, it just tells me that this has to break down. And break down, I mean that we like, uh, really totally go below 17k because this local bottom here that's the Curtis's bottom he uh, foretold that like to like very accurately and it's it's holding and I don't know how long it's gonna be still holding but it's gonna have to give up I'm sorry Curtis but what I'm seeing this wedge has to break down the if stocks have put in a bottom like if the economy does sort of have a soft landing Mm -hmm. and we go and uh, consumer keeps their jobs and keeps spending, stocks are not going much lower. And in that case, a lot of those traders are also trading Bitcoin. In other words, if they're making money in stocks, they're going to start putting a bid into Bitcoin. And so that market mm -hmm. is much larger than the crypto market, right? Yeah, and, I have just switched to S&P 500 yeah. right now. So, so you, even though you're in, in, in and of its own, the technical charts might be saying Bitcoin's going down. I think what's happening right now, David, is you're probably right that we should be going lower, but Bitcoin's responding to the stock bounce, right? Uh, I agree. Uh, and also yes. DXY. So we can talk about that maybe next if, 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 mm -hmm. uh, after you're finished, is that the US dollar has pulled back. Um, and yeah, I agree with you. The correlation with, uh, with S&P 500, I don't think it is breaking at the moment. I don't think it has ever... I mean, yeah, Katie, she just, I think she made a chart, Katie Wood, um, correlation chart, Bitcoin and S&P, and that chart showed her showed her that we were less correlated in the past than we are today. But it's, I do disagree with this. It's a wrong, I think it's the wrong way to look at this. I think we've always been, I 
firmly believe I can demonstrate it. We've always been strongly correlated to the stocks, always. Um, 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 and but uh, yeah, and I also think that it's going to change in the future. I don't know when. I don't think it's changing at the moment. And yes, uh, if if what I say is true, if Bitcoin really is going to break down, if this ascending wedge is going to work out, like I think it should, then uh, the then the stocks will likely again retest. They don't have to put the new low. No, no, no. But they uh, they would likely retest this level right here. They would likely retest uh, thirty seven hundred something. And but importantly, that stocks will drive the price of Bitcoin, not the other way around, right? So the we're stocks really will drive. Stock I market. think so. Yes. Yes. Of course. So, it's it's so, a, the market is a hundred trillion versus half yeah. a bit, half a trillion. Like, yes. Right? So, so should I be right? Then this level uh, could be retested yeah. once so again. We do, we need that's to what I'm saying. Stocks and the economy, not not well, just my yeah. opinion. But yeah, that's what's leading. Yeah. And that's why I also I, I I will leave this circle here because it might be relevant. Let's see for the next weeks, for the upcoming weeks. Let's right. see. It's uh, from 3700 to 3800 somewhere there. Yeah. And now, okay, this is the XY. Please go on. So yeah, the dollar's pulled back a bit. Um, this DXY is it? Yeah, it is. Actually, hasn't DXY? I I I just misspoke. DXY remains very very strong. Um, this is on weekly. But last yeah. week, at least, there is some relief. Relief, a bit, but not much. Yeah, um, my fault line is still far. So unfortunately. we have. So let's look at the broader world <sighs> global economy, right? And um, so, DXY remains very strong. Why is that? Um, a lot of indicators are pointing to a slowing global economy. Uh, recession mm -hmm. possibilities remain, um, and DXY is reflecting that. It's a flight to safety. Um, you know, you had big news in Sri Lanka. We talked about last episode. Yeah, I agree. Where I basically, remember. Sri Lanka was bankrupt. Yeah, um, inflation remains super strong. Our next chart will see that the U.S. is at 9.1 percent inflation in June, um, and so this is all risk off, and uh, the U.S. dollar benefits in the, that situation. And obviously, the Fed needs to raise rates. They're going to raise rates another either 0.75 or a full percentage or a full point. Um, I think that's this week. This week or early next week is, is the Fed rate change. Okay. And so hmm. The US dollars responding to that. Um, so even though the economy, I mean, there's lag time, right? So the second quarter earnings are looking good. The consumer still has money. Uh, unemployment rate is still low. Real estate has not crashed yet, but people are watching for that to happen. Um, another really interesting stat is the, the six month lending rate is higher than the 10-year lending rate. So uh, I don't have that chart in front of me, but if you want to borrow money from the US government for six months, it'll cost you 3%, but you can borrow for 10 years at 2.9%. So this is what we talked about in, in inverted yield. Mm -hmm. We yeah. usually talk about the two-year versus the 10-year. And if the two-year goes higher than the 10-year, that's the sign of a recession. We now have a six month lending rate inverted versus the 10 year. That's uh, quite a strong sign of a recession, I would it's, say. It's, it's almost never happened and it's, it's bizarre. And all of that is indicating that the bond traders believe a recession is coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's a lot of indications that uh, stocks will be under pressure. Uh, we just haven't seen it yet. Okay, uh, we should briefly mention gold, but very briefly, because yeah, go for uh, it. The, 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 don't have much the time are crying again so uh, so again us yeah. dollar versus gold right so a strong us dollar makes it very difficult for gold to rise because it's an, this chart is denominated in us dollars so it's really the wrong chart to look at we should be looking at gold in japanese yen or euro or turkish lira right and that's where you'll see gold really breaking out the gold is actually strengthening it's just not in us dollar terms as you pointed out, we are looking at a chart gold in the USDs. And I think that my, I used to have a long call. I think that's a poor call. So I just want to make officially another call. And my previous call was to go long at 1830, I think. 
So uh, now what I would call was to break out even perhaps because I think there is quite a chance that I can see that it's going to retest back 1810 maybe, 1815. So break out even there if you open long before and I would be I would be looking at the bearish line actually. I am making a bearish call on gold. Okay. That's so implied point. in that is that you think DXY will straight stay strong over the next or, six months. Or gold will not stop stop rising against other currencies. Yeah. Also, that is an option. Okay, so uh, Curtis, please, would you perhaps go into your topic that you have? Well, uh, so just a couple of charts. Let's look at the inflation, the 9.1% print. Yeah, so okay. uh, we've been following this for a few months. It's pretty scary. Horrifying. Uh, looks like it's, so in April, 2022, you can see we hit 8.3. In May, we hit 8.6. And now we're at 9.1. So a very scary ascending rate mm -hmm. of US. This is headline inflation, by the way in case some people are saying these numbers are different than what they're looking up on the internet. This is headline inflation. Yeah. Um, so now the market, I think, is thinking that because oil prices have fallen and some commodity prices have fallen and the US dollar might have peaked, that we're going to get lower than 9.1 in July. I think they're looking that we might have talked because first of all, 9.1 is a very high historical print. And so yeah. when you get an extremely high historical print, usually the next print is lower. It could be just that general consensus, but also oil prices have fallen, which indicates there is a slowing in the economy and that prices might be falling. So that would be another reason why the stock market is rallying. Um, not only are Q2 earnings good, but that maybe we have finally topped that's yet to be seen. Who knows? We might go to 10% in July, but there's a, oh a 50% chance we could go below 9.1. If we go below 9.1, the market narrative will be that maybe we've talked and that the Fed will raise yeah. one point um, this week. That but be towards great. The end of the year, it'll fall. Okay. But, or rather, they'll slow their tightening, right? But the uh, print will come out like the. 10th of August or something like that. So uh, it's quite yes. a few weeks away. It's like yes, three weeks yes. away still. But the, yeah, but the market's yeah. already is always forward looking. So um, speculating. The hope, yeah. The, the, the hope is that this would be the ideal soft landing and stocks will have a good second half of the year. We I would like to add you, I would far. like to add yeah. something that maybe um uh, there is also there is also that way that okay, the July print will be lower. But then the August will be like really bad, like like in September the print will come yeah. out and and the August will be like like over nine point one. If then August is over nine point one, that is a disaster. Yes, but remember that assuming now what would let's say interest rates do go down a bit, but it okay. could be because the next we're in a recession. Maybe suddenly, <clears throat> suddenly um, the world economy crashes. Right, so. Now, in a, if if we're hitting a deep recession in the second half of the year, inflation will fall, right? Because people will not be buying anything, so prices will fall. Mm -hmm. A recession is a natural way to uh, to cause inflation to go down, right? People people don't have jobs, people don't have spending money, so so what we might get is what we wished for. We want lower inflation, but it might be at the cost of a recession. And then what you'd see is earnings collapse with companies and then the stock market would turn over. Let's say that that means that the next inflation print is going to be lower. Okay. Yeah. But then the, the, the one after could still be higher. It could be. Yeah, it could be. Right. That, but that's what, what I'm saying. saying that, and that would be disaster. Yeah. 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 But, um, but remember these things sort of balance off each other. Um, if inflation is staying high, you could say it's because the economy is still strong that people are spending money. So they kind of go trade off each other. Um, and careful what you wish for. So we may get lower inflation because suddenly we're in a deep recession in the world. So that's all I'm saying. So let's watch out for the uh, August the 10th. I'm sure we'll do a podcast then and we'll talk right. a great deal about it. Right. Um, okay, the next chair, do you wanna mention? This is the Meyer multiple, multiple, a guy mm -hmm. named Trace Meyer. Um, it's just showing Bitcoin uh, relative um, I believe it's the price in relation to the 200 week moving average, 200 day work moving average, what it says right there. 
uh, it doesn't have the explanation there, but basically we're at very low, low relative prices. Mm -hmm. um, you can see we're almost, we hit the third lowest Meyer multiple ever. We hit that last month in June. Okay. That was the third lowest print of the Meyer multiple. It basically, it's a very simple chart that shows you when to buy and when to sell and when it's relatively um, underpriced and overpriced. So um, we hit the third lowest ever in terms of Bitcoin price. So um, it's still relatively cheap at 23, 24,000. Okay. Um, the article you brought us. Yeah, no, just this was related that we're uh, corporate earnings. Uh, companies are making money. People are spending. And mm -hmm. that's why we're getting a rally in stocks. We were talking about the the, the psychology, right? I don't know if you have that chart where you have the uh, despair and depression and oh and sure, sure i always have that chart we often talk about how narrative drives price right so when we're in a bull market um people are telling us prices are going higher and so the price goes higher and then people tell us again the prices are going higher so the narrative drives price and we have all these stories about uh you know michael saylor type stories or stories about adoption in el salvador mm -hmm. and the narrative yeah. drives price on the way down the narrative then the narrative Ups, would change. The price. Now, it... But I think also people need to realize the opposite, which is price drives narrative. Okay. okay. Both. Now, when you look at it that way, you would say, uh, because price was rising last year, that's why people were so bullish because they were seeing the price rising and making stories about why it will rise further. Right. Mm -hmm. And then as the price started to fall, people were forced to change their narratives because it no longer fit. You can't say we're going to 100K when the price is going down. And then you need to make a story about why it's going down. So that yeah. would be things like contagion or three arrows. Or So now uh, this week, uh, yesterday, we've now had the price break out again. So what you'll see is the narratives will follow price. So what you're going to see the next couple of weeks is people talking about they'll make up stories about, oh, the price is rising because X. Okay. The price is rising because stocks are rising. The price is rising because Mexico is going to adopt. The price is rising because um, Coinbase is looking stronger. So actually, price drives the narrative as well, and maybe even more so. And so I think it's good for your listeners to think about the news headlines they're seeing in Bitcoin and crypto and that how actually the price is triggering the narrative as much as the narrative is triggering price. And when you understand this, you'll see how the, the waves happen. Right. That's all I wanted yeah. to add there. Do you have any comments on that? Because we talked about sentiment a lot. We talked about the sentiment and I just don't think we even were in the in the panic. I don't even think influencers were generally in the panic phase. Remember in January, you mentioned Bitcoin hitting 12 and a half K. And, and I think we laughed, you know, in yeah. January and now yeah, 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 12K. Yeah, I talked about 12K. Remember, yes. we looked at the long logarithmic chart. You yeah. might want to put that in later, but that was yeah. a great chart. You showed that, and I was like, you're right. It looks like it could hit 12K. Now, you were probably one out of 100 people that would actually realistically consider the 12K, right? So last week, I saw several people say we could go 10 to 12K, like four, four or five <laughs> YouTubers said 12K. So... um and there was also, we've had a lot of pain. So like maybe they, there was some panic, but not a capitulation. No, I just I just refuse yeah. to believe that there was a now, capitulation. To agree with your thesis that we might be going lower is that bear. this has been way too short of a bear market, right? This has been Yeah, well. yeah that's, that's what I'm um, saying as well. It's only been a, a month since we hit, well, we hit 17K, two and a half. Okay, here we go. This, this yeah. is the one. Yeah, so you showed this in January, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. on the first and podcast. We, and the bottom band, was it the red line or the bottom blue line? Yeah, no, the blue K. line and maybe even below that. Yeah. And uh, so now that is totally mainstream belief. <laughs> 10K, 12K, 15K. So yeah, so that's um, that's why the rally. <clears throat> well, that's what, no, that's, that's again, why I really think it's about stocks, but um, uh, if you're looking at sentiment, we've definitely swung too far the other way in a short period of time. But it may okay. be that this was the beginning of the bear market. And that, like we talked about uh, in our last episode, that uh, charts get solved not only by price, but by length of time. So 
Yeah, we, don't, we, we don't have to go below 17K. We might stay at 20K for six months and that will resolve the buyer sellers and put in a bottom because of time. Well, we haven't had much time, right? We really haven't. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that would be a reason why we need That's to That's also look why for, I don't believe there was a yeah. capitulation yet. No, yeah. no. Um, okay, now let's, let's challenge that idea. We didn't really have a blow off top. We hit 69K. It's very arguable that the three arrows, well, the um, Terra Luna blow up, well, that's what popped That the was an fair euphoria. That was a clear euphoria in uh, in October and November. It, but... it doesn't have to be like people imagine the blow off top. It doesn't have to be. And it's not going to be like the previous quote unquote cycles yes. or cycles but don't most, really work. Most new players were not in massive profits. So there was not euphoria unless you'd been in Bitcoin since 2017. The All new the buyers. newcomers, what I've, yeah. what I've learned and heard and, and saw, they were literally taking loans in autumn right. and winter. People were taking loans to invest into crypto. That happens in euphoria. Yeah. Point taken. So let's say we were halfway there. And I agree, it wasn't necessarily, um, but we only hit 3x of the all-time high. Well, only, quote-unquote, only. This is more mature market, so it's not Good only. I think it's, it's really... Thought. Yeah, but we hit 20x in 2017. It's not the same market I anymore. think, anyways, so we haven't had enough time at the bottom here. And if that was the bottom, we're not going to 50k here. We might go to 30k, and then we might test 20k at least before going higher. And that might take another three to six months. But you never know. You really never know. It's a it's less a experimental market, I'm saying. It's mature yeah, market. It's very far from mature market. And it's less experimental market than it was in prior to 2017. But it's a tiny market cap, one trillion dollars total crypto market cap. That's a rounding error. That's at the moment one trillion. But it's yeah. very small. It could easily double or triple, easily. It could 10x. But uh, no. But I, I agree. I, I, I think with my trading account, I bought the 23k breakout. I think I'll be selling towards 30k, and. Uh, looking to buy back in, in the, let's say the 20 or even lower. Um, but um, stocks are what to watch and, and the global economy are what to watch. Um, and if we do get a soft landing, I think that might've been the bottom at 17K. Okay, I'm afraid I can't even add anything to that because we don't have the time. We have to wrap this up. So the next podcast um, we will do on Sunday, like we usually did. Um, but maybe not this Sunday because it's a little too soon, perhaps in four days. So maybe the, the, the Sunday yeah. after the 31st, yeah. the, the 31st of July. I'll be at my parents' house. I'll try to show you a, a bear or a deer or a cougar. They have wild animals in their near their house. So, uh, <laughs> okay. I would try, I'll try Everybody, to get including myself, is looking forward to it. No, they have a bear that walks through the backyard. So, so definitely stay with us and tune in the, the 10 days from now because you are in to see some, some, <laughs> some wild I can't animals. Promise, but it could happen. It could happen. Okay, so uh, thank you very much and talk to you again. See you next time. <laughs>